Hi, I'm Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap, and we help business analysts start their careers. Today, I wanna to talk about how you, as a business analyst, are adding value to your organization. And we're gonna use the, the concept of return on investment, and we're gonna break down specifically how business analysis and business analysts create a better return on investment when they're assigned to critical projects in their organization. So let's dive right in. First, return on investment. What does that mean? The acronym for that is ROI, and it's really the weight or the value of the return on a project or what benefit the organization receives versus the investment that the organization makes in that project. So if an organization invests in a software development team to build or customize or implement a new software solution and all the business stakeholder time that goes into figuring out what that system should do, that's the investment, right? The time, the money, the energy that gets invested in creating that solution. The return is the benefit that that organization receives from that solution once it's in place in the business. So it could be more efficient turnaround time, more customers, more revenue, uh, more efficiency. So relieving staff time that can be reused on other projects or being able to eliminate kind of exterior uh, staffing or a redundant staffing. So lots of ways to measure the return on that project. And business analysts, we impact both sides of that equation. So we help streamline the investment, so minimize what that investment in the project actually is, and also maximize the return. So maximize the value we're getting out of that process. So let's, you know, that probably sounds counterintuitive at first, so I wanna dig into the specific ways that business analysts do this and give you a few examples as well. So let's talk about how business analysts reduce the investment or the cost of a project. And this probably does feel pretty counterintuitive if you're thinking, you know, you're a hiring manager and you're like, well, should I add a business analyst to that to my team? Isn't that an additional cost? Aren't I expanding how much the, this this project is going to cost. You know, why don't we just get started coding? Cause that's what we really need. We need that code, right? Or we need that configured system into our business users' hands. And why don't we just skip the analysis and go right to coding? Well, we know it doesn't always really work that way, right? But some specific ways that business analysts actually help reduce costs, even though of course their salary is a line item on your budget for the project, is that they're going to reduce rework. So when you just start coding and start figuring things out and then you put that into the hands of a business user, they're gonna be like, oh no, I didn't really want this, I wanted that. All of a sudden, something that maybe seemed really simple gets complex is like stakeholder requests come in and defects come in and change requests come in and you have this rework where you're going back and revisiting the same code, the same implementation, again and again and again. And that is obviously, you know, your cost goes from here to here. You add some analysis up front to figure out what is actually needed and that rework time should go down. Uh, the other place that business analysts really have an effect on project costs is in the reduction of what I like to call requirements churn or kind of like the time it takes for the business community to figure out what it is they actually want. Now, a lot of times that isn't like a line item cost on a budget, but if you think about a requirements meeting, especially one that might have high level stakeholders in the room, like there's a definite cost to that meeting. And if you're having duplicate meetings again and again and again to discuss essentially the same issue and never really getting to a solution, uh, you know, that's an expense that your organization is taking on that's really bloating the, the impact or the cost or the what needs to be invested to figure out those requirements. So good business analysis is going to help present solutions, create a logical decision-making process, 
remind people, you know, we went down that road before, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole again, and kind of plug those communication gaps and really help facilitate communication across departments, across different levels of the organization. And yes, that process, it takes time. It's not like you put a business analyst in and snap, they come up with the requirements, but it's going to take less time and less churn than if you kind of just didn't have somebody who was in charge of facilitating that part of the process. And then finally, when it comes to the investment side of the equation, the other way that business analysts can really help is help, helping find more cost-effective solutions. So when you really dial in to what problem are we solving, you'll hear me say that again and again, uh, what problem are we solving? Why is this project being implemented in the first place? Sometimes like creative solutions just pop up, right? And they don't necessarily even have to be big technology solutions. Maybe there's tools that you can use that you already have. Maybe there's a business process change that can really get you a certain amount of the way there. And that's where we can take what maybe was a big investment and maybe we can reduce that by half and still get that same return. Doesn't always happen, but if it is possible, your business analyst is going to help you find it. Okay, so now let's talk about the other side of the equation and how business analysts actually help you increase the potential return or what the benefits are from that project. Remember, we've made an investment in a solution and now it's out in the business. How does that actually have more benefit? So the first thing is we talked about how a business analyst is always gonna go try to find the problem to be solved. Not try, will find the problem to be solved. And as part of that, we often discover new business benefits. So hey, you know, while we're looking at um, you know, this part, is there something here that we could do as well? So I remember really early on in my career meeting with a, a, uh, an end user who was showing me how they were copying and pasting documents into this field. And then the, they had to like edit it too because it wasn't copying right. And it ended up being like a really simple change to enable the workflow and save them tons of time, right? And as a business analyst, I could see that the, there was a possibility of, as we were touching the system to to add on a piece that would really save them a lot of time in their workflow. But until I actually saw their work environment, um, I would have never known that. And it would have never made it into the requirements for that project if we hadn't actually analyzed their current business process and really understood how their work flowed. So there was lots of ways we could have solved that problem. It ended up being a small technology tweak and it added a lot of value. And so that's an example of discovering new business needs that can be easily included in the, the investment that's already being made to deliver even more value to the business. Another way that business analysts support that increase of value is but through prioritization. So, you know, typically we'll be like, yeah, we want all the things, right? Like there's a list of all these requirements. And here's the, hunt. let's just say it's a hundred things and we hand that to our development team. They start going through them in order, or maybe they group them by, you know, technical component or area of the system and implement them that way. Well, you know, when you do that and you say all these things are required, you know, maybe the first 10 things aren't the most important things. Maybe they're not the most valuable. Maybe we start working on an area of the system and three of those things are really, really important. And another like five of them are just like nice to haves that, you know, actually maybe complicate the system more than it needs to be and don't actually deliver the value that needs to be. So relentless focus on that prioritization um, and making sure the most requ important requirements get dealt with first in the project that we know what the most important ones are, which ones are going to add the most value value and then make sure those are clearly communicated as part of building the solution. And then another way that business analysts increase that return is the way that they facilitate this communication with the business community. So uh, I have this story I love to share where I walked into a, a contract as a consultant and uh, they had implemented a document management system and there were business users actually printing the document twice. The goal of that system was to reduce paper and make the process more efficient. After the system, they were like printing and writing and uploading and writing and uploading and printing. Like 
multiple steps, additional steps in order to use the system that IT had said they need to use in a way that was going to work with what they understood their business process to be. And that as a business analyst, we don't stop like when the solution is built, we stop when the business is accepted that solution and understands what their updated business process is going to be. And that's where the real business value gets realized. One final way that we help increase the return uh, is providing really a framework where IT can scale. So if you're a small organization or can you know with a smaller team you know you can communicate really well and you can have a really tight-knit team where everybody knows what each other does and who to ask what questions as you start scaling your capabilities and scaling your team and growing your organization, that informal kind of everybody knows each other communication tends not to scale. And you need somebody in the middle of engaging the new business stakeholders, helping educate the new business stakeholders, figuring out who knows what in technology to, to facilitate that as well. And so really think of your business analyst as a role that is going to help that IT team scale to deliver even more value to the business and help your business scale as well. So those are my immediate takeaways on how business analysts add value on projects. It's really, I think, just scratching the surface. There's a lot more that we could cover here. I'm going to challenge you, if you're a business analyst listening in, think about it. Are you adding value in all of these ways in your organization? If not, where could you be adjusting how you approach your work to add more value? This is what's going to increase your reputation, um, get you on the interesting projects, be the person that everybody wants to work with because they know when they work with you, they are going to have a value added resource on their team. And if you're a hiring manager or a technology leader or a business leader who's like wondering if you should start a business analyst team, think about where you're experiencing some of the pain points that we just talked about and who in your organization could start doing these activities, essentially stepping into this business analyst role and really creating a more predictable project life cycle and development process. Uh, it's gonna help your projects be more successful and it's also gonna help the people on those projects be happier because they know that they're contributing to a successful project as well. So those are my tips for you. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you add value as a business analyst or anything you're gonna change as a result of listening to today's video. Again, I'm Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap.